Hi, my name is Julie Bostic, and I am the Executive Director of the Office of Marriage and Family Life. And I'm Kitty Mandis. I am the Marriage Preparation Coordinator for the Mar Office of Marriage and Family Life. And Kitty and I and our husbands, we also do marriage prep for the Archdiocesan program, and we've trained parishes, mentor couples, so that they know how to do marriage prep in their own um, parishes. And what we're talking today about is a new program called Witness to Love. Um, it's put out by uh, marriage, or, uh, Mary Rose Barrett and her husband and their pastor and some counselors and some psychologists that got together and put together this program. The pros of the program is that, are that they, it is a catechumenate version of marriage prep. It's a model of a catechumenate and it is heavy on accompaniment. It teaches the virtues and life skills, and it, uh, it leaves an opportunity to do a retreat on the theology of the body. Um, so it can really work well in the parish and do exactly what Pope Francis has been calling us to do, to be missionary disciples. It's based solely on missionary discipleship, so it's pretty awesome. Um, the first step of the program would be that the couple, the engaged couple, would meet with the priest or the deacon, and the priest or deacon would kind of give them an overview of the program, but also ask them to think about a couple in their lives, hopefully somebody that is a member of the parish that they reside, that they're going to get married in, and somebody that they know, um, and that they feel... Uh, that is a good example of what married love should be all about and sharing that with the world. Um, also, uh, an example of a couple that's living the Catholic faith and, de and devout and faithful to their, to their uh, relationship with Jesus. And so um, the priest or deacon would ask the couple if they know somebody like that. Now, what if the engaged couple does not know a couple in their parish that fits that description? If the couple does not know anyone in their parish like that, um, it's understandable and it's okay. It could be somebody from another parish. It's not ideal, but it could be. Somebody that they have a relationship with is better. Um, but we can also, in the parishes, have mentor couples so that the couple can choose from one of those showcase couples. We call them showcase couples. Now those couples do not have to be trained. It's better if they're not trained because young adults have a tendency to distrust um, those people who are experts, are, uh, have been prepared by someone else because they don't know that they're telling them the truth or being truthful with them. It's better if they can have their own relationship with them. So then the second meeting, they go and they take, the, they take their mentor couple and they meet with the marriage prep coordinator at the parish. Now that could be anybody. It doesn't have, have to be a paid position at the parish. It could be somebody who is just a volunteer um, because we have a lot of those. Really, this person is a record keeper and just kind of follows up with the couple and is a good witness to love themselves so that they always treat the couple in a, in a loving and kind and missionary discipleship kind of way. We're accompanying this couple from the beginning all the way throughout their lives and that's the whole purpose of this marriage prep. And a lot of times we as the, uh, the church, we have a difficult time finding mentor couples because they have excuses, well I'm busy, I have a family life, I do this and that, which is totally understandable. But when this young engaged couple goes and talks to an engaged couple or a mentor couple and says, I have to pick a mentor couple, I picked you because you're such a good example to me and um, you're a good faithful Catholic, and who's going to be able to say no to that because it's such a compliment? Um, also, the marriage prep coordinator will go over the program and explain that one of the things they commit to is that they would go to Mass twice a month together um, as the mentor couple and the couple. They can go to any parish they want. It would be nice if they would go to the parish that they're getting married in or will belong to when they get married. Um, they commit to uh, a retreat together, uh, and we can do that at the Archdiocese or they can do that at the parish. 
they commit to having dinner with their uh, clergy uh, person, either the priest or the deacon, in their home and have dinner with them and discuss theology. And they commit to um, meeting monthly and discussing the video and go through the workbook and they talk about the virtues because it's virtue-based. So um, you mentioned a retreat. Now the retreat is that something that the parish can do themselves? How many couples would you say would be needed for a retreat? The retreat, it would be best um, if there was um, probably, I would say four to six couples would be good at least, um, because then there's interaction, there's a, a certain feel to that. But we did it with two couples and it was very nice at Ascension Parish in Chesterfield. And, um, but that retreat, it could be done by the parish if the parish has enough couples and then feels like they have somebody that's got a little bit more of an expertise on theology of the body because they go over the sacramental or theology of the body portion of the marriage prep. So, Excuse me, you, you, this retreat, it would be kind of a smaller, intimate retreat, not a large retreat like some of the parishes are used to with like a chirp or ax. Uh, no, it would be like just basically very prayerful. An opportunity for reconciliation would be nice. Mm -hmm. An opportunity for mass at Ascension. We went to mass all together before we started the retreat. We had the chapel right next door to us so they could go and pray. In the, on the break time in adoration. We did a lot of reflection, a lot of discussion. It was very intimate, it was really nice. So it just needs to be prayerful. And um, so during that session with the marriage prep coordinator, the marriage prep coordinator also explains that during the first meeting, the guys would go off together and they would plan a date night. They were in the house, at the mentor couple's house, they would plan a date night for both couples to go on, but it can't be just dinner and a movie. It has to be a, an original, exciting date that both the women would like. And why do you have the men plan this date? Because men have a tendency to be a little more standoffish when they first meet another guy or another other people. Um, depending on their personality, but a lot of times guys don't bond as quickly. So they found that for the guys to have this uh, agenda item, the first meeting, and kind of go off together and plan, they have an opportunity to laugh and joke and plan this um, special date night. So it makes it a special time. So then the third meeting, they meet with their mentor couple and they do the date night, they go over the, the DVDs and they do a discussion. The workbooks are very easy to use. The discussions happen really naturally. It's a very relaxed atmosphere. And the men mentor couple, if they have children, the children can be there because it gives them, the engaged couple, an opportunity to see a family in action and um, a young family in action, hopefully. And um, so they continue to meet monthly. They have six meetings together. Um, in the mentor couple's house, so it's very laid back. It's way more laid back than a workshop classroom type atmosphere. Um, then the fourth meeting is usually the retreat. Um, you can have the retreat anytime during the process, but what we found um, is that if they have gotten to kind of know each other since the mentor couple and the engaged couple go together, they're more apt to have good conversations with each other. Mm -hmm. Um, having it in a really relaxed atmosphere, the retreat as well, is very important. And you don't want it to be too, um, too formal or too staid or you just want it to be very relaxed. Um, the fifth meeting is the mentor couple invites the priest or the deacon uh, and the engaged couple over for dinner. And they have a very relaxed, calm conversation. They get to know each other. The couples get to see that here's this priest or deacon, they're human beings, they're just like us. Um, as my, mom, uh, my son said one time, we invited the priest over and he said, we really have to have, a, what do you talk to them about? And I said, you know, they are just human beings, you know? And um, you know, you just, you're in your house, you're relaxed, there's a whole different feeling to that and you get to know the couples on a much deeper level and they can talk freely with you and ask you questions about the theology that they learned on the retreat and any other questions they might have. 
So this isn't really any additional work for the priest. He doesn't have to prepare in any way. He's already been trained. He knows theology of the body. This is what they learned. So it's just a nice, relaxing evening. The priest gets dinner as well, which is mm -hmm. always a plus. And it can serve as the one of their meetings with a couple. Usually uh, priests meet with their couples between four and six times. So this serves as just one of their meetings. And they can accomplish the things they need to accomplish still, but still accomplish the theology discussion. Then um, on the sixth meeting, or sometime in the process, you invite the couples, both couples, the mentor couple and the couples, and you can do more than two couples. You can do, if you're working with six couples, you can invite them all on the same weekend to come to Mass, and during one of the Masses of the weekend, you introduce them to the parish, just like you do the RCIA candidates. You pray together as a congregation for these people preparing for marriage and for the mentor couples who are helping to prepare them. And you... The, it's a community aspect. Um, you could have a little gathering afterwards. Also, we try to we want to try to get the couples started on building that community. So maybe having three or four couples there is a good thing because then they you can introduce them and maybe they can invite them to, as part of their Christian community with their mentor couple. So there's that network, that community built in the parish automatically. Then of course you got their wedding day. Hopefully the mentor couple goes and attends the wedding day and is a big part of that. And then the eighth step is hopefully that continued support by that mentor couple with that engaged couple so that they walk, they accompany them and if they start having issues, um, we would talk to the tribunal oftentimes um, when you hit that first disillusionment phase of marriage is sometimes the most difficult hurdle to get over and so they will struggle and they need just a little assistant but not necessarily a counselor they can call their mentor couple and say hey this is what's happening you know what what do you suggest for this and they can meet regularly they can do some Lexio Divina um, we're getting ready to do a template for that at the Office of Marriage and Family Life to give people some idea of how to do that. So you think this could also help the mentor couples grow uh, in their own relationship just by going through this process with engaged couples. And if it is a, a, a mentor couple that's a little older, and let's say they have children the same age as the engaged couple, they might be able to um, realize some of the issues that this generation is going through, perhaps with communication, with technology. At, that they might be able to even help their own children by right. going through this. And, and they're forming each other. They're helping mm -hmm. to form each other. They're growing in their faith together. And they're becoming more and more connected to the parish. Um, and also, instead of forming one couple in a marriage prep, you're forming two mm -hmm. couples of marriage prep. And you've built an ingrown connection to the parish that wasn't there before because many of our young adult couples they are Roman Catholics. We call them Roman Catholics because they don't necessarily belong to a church, but they go to church, but they don't always go to the same church. They go wherever is convenient to them. And part of the aspect of Catholic faith life is making the parish a family, just as your domestic family is a family, to have that access to a greater uh, church that is your family, your parish family. because. Things happen in the family, and when somebody passes away, or somebody gets married, or somebody needs reconciliation, or when you need to get First Communion or Confirmation, they're more apt to stay connected to the parish if they've built that community, that family, that parish family. And that's what this program is all about. Um, if you have any questions that you would like to ask our office or any concerns with it, um, we have materials and we'll be happy to share them with you. You can borrow them and look. Um, there's a website. If you go to witness2love.org, you can see an intro video. Um, and it's a good way to get a feeling for just how the program goes. Did I miss anything? And when are we going to pilot this here in St. Louis? October the 27th. We're going to do it at St. Anselm Parish, and Mary Rose Verret, our Verret, and her husband are going to be here to train it. 
and it's welcome all of the priests and deacons and all of the marriage prep coordinators are enrichment couples our mentor couples are invited thank you